uh, very warm good afternoon to the experts for today professor parikshit singh manas and dr hasan rifat uh, i'll be introduce, introducing them shortly uh, meanwhile i request uh, all of uh, uh, the participants to kindly mute your audios and videos so that we can have a smooth session in between uh, the topic for today is very interesting one that is heritage tourism how to turn the crisis into opportunity in this i mean in this phase of distress uh, please note that this is our 12th lecture of the series so far we had lectures regarding the various domains of tourism and hospitality and we are also noting down the requirements of the students as well in terms of what all topics they need deliberations on they need discussions on so we have organized lectures on various themes such as my tourism religious tourism sustainable uh, tourism impact of covid on tourism scope of hospitality graduates wellness tourism and so on we are also posting all the updates on social media platforms including question and answers asked by the students during the sessions as we have also created a facebook page and other social media platforms uh, it's my immense pleasure to tell you that we have received an overwhelming response till now for the initiative of organizing the web lecture series globally and bringing the best of the thoughts to the uh, and taking the education to the next level and keep the students updated with the latest happenings in the field of tourism and hospitality we have also created a facebook page as already uh, told you to keep you abreast of all the latest developments in uh, from our side and the latest latest happenings in the field of tourism and hospitality i would again request you to please keep your audios and videos on mute mode so that uh, we can have a smooth session and your questions will be answered after the completion of session so please keep posting your questions during the session we quickly i'll start with the introductions of today's experts uh professor uh, parikshit singh manas and dr hasan rifat uh, regarding dr hasan uh, uh uh his uh regarding his qualification his his bs in tour guidance faculty of uh, he's working as uh in the in faculty of uh, tourism hotels uh in egypt he's ms in tourism phd in tourism ms in cultural heritage management and he is working as senior lecturer at faculty of tourism and hotels as already discussed in uh, university of luxor university in egypt uh, he has 20 years of experience in professional academic tourism sector uh, successfully contributing to enhancing a community based sustainable tourism in a number of local communities in egypt uh, joining the egyptian tourism uh, authority uh, in 2001 as a tourist specialist in market research department Uh, then he served as a tourism and heritage consultant in one of the international development projects run by UNDP that is United Nations Development Program as where he developed the strategy that enables the local communities in Egypt to get benefited from natural and cultural resources to achieve sustainable tourism development he also worked as a researcher as the brit at the british university in egypt as well as the director of international tourism and hospitality management uh further he has been uh, invited as a keynote speaker in a number of international scientific uh, conferences and seminars regarding professor manas who is our regular expert uh, since the inception of the web lecture series and he is also the flag bearer of this particular initiative of bird that is borderless educator resilience for tomorrow tourism and hospitality he is working as professor in the business school university of jammu as well as the professor in school of hospitality and tourism management he is also working as coordinator global understanding course in university of jammu and also uh, handling director university business incubation and innovation center as well as he is the visiting professor of many universities at national and international level his research interests are tourism recreation hospitality management education marketing sustainable tourism responsible tourism uh, peace building film induced tourism and destination marketing so he is uh, also acquainted with so many uh, forms of tourism uh, sustainable uh, uh, professor manas also won the institute of hospitality education research award in 2016 at the european council of hotel restaurant and institutional education conference held in budapest in 2016 he has also received uh, the prestigious hungarian faculty research fellowship in 2013 as well as so many other renowned faculty uh, research fellowships he also won the best uh, career award Uh, for best young teacher awarded by all india council of technical education uh, by government of india and he has written so many books related to tourism and hospitality and so many research papers which have been published in renowned uh, journals so without wasting any time i would uh, request uh, anas kindly initiate the session please 
Thank you, Nikhil. Thanks a lot. Good afternoon to all the participants and good afternoon to my colleague and my friend, Dr. Hassan Rehpath. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. Uh, as Nikhil has been uh, talking about it, I would request everyone to keep their cameras off and uh, videos on mute mode so that we can use maximum bandwidth. I'll just start uh, sharing my screen. Nikhil, is my screen visible? It's coming, sir. It's coming. Yeah, it, it has come. Okay. Thank you, Nikhil. Okay. okay. So, a very good afternoon to all of you once again. Thank you. We have reached our 12th lecture series and uh, we are doing fairly well. Uh, a lot of new people are joining in and uh, are giving us very positive co comments to, for this particular thing. Uh, Dr. Hassan Rafat, uh, once again, very warm welcome to you to this series and thank you for agreeing to be an expert today. And we all look forward to hearing from you, my students and my uh, colleagues from India and other parts of the world are very eager to uh, I believe some of the students of Dr. Hassan Rifat are also here. So we are going to talk about the heritage tourism aspect today. I'll just build a prelude uh, as my job has been and uh, start with uh, what we are seeing and what, what are the opportunities that are opening up. So first of all, to begin with uh, the updates aspect, the, the, uh, a very positive aspect vis-a-vis -vis what's uh, what, what is going on and how things have been uh, 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 have been have been moving within the scenario of uh, COVID and all those things. So uh, if we start with the, the basic thing that is the UNWTO has uh, only yesterday launched global guidelines to reopen tourism. So that's a very, very heartening aspect that uh, the Apex organization has uh, in sync with its member states has started working uh, towards launching the or reopening of the tourism. And they have been constantly thinking of this and they have come out with a set of guidelines which actually are going to talk about that how uh, tourism is going to open up and how things are going to move in a positive direction. So that's a, that's a heartening thing. Uh, UNWTO also is partnering. Uh, last time I discussed with you that UNWTO is partnering with CNN with those 60 second clips and that they are coming up. Now they have come out with uh, to open up uh, safe, seamless travel and restoring confidences are the key priorities, but they, have, they are now building, working on innovation and they are interacting with Google. So they have built up a partnership with Google to come out with this thing. So for youngsters, for all those people who are listening this lecture to this lecture, it's a very important aspect. Start looking at it, what innovative things UNWTO is building up and how Google is projecting them and how you all can uh, move forward and start working on these particular things. Uh, the guidelines obviously have been produced in, consulta global, uh, in consultation with Global Tourism Crisis Committee. And uh, it, they're, they're trying to look at both uh, the providing support to the government as well as the private sector. So from this unparalleled crisis, and uh, you must be aware of the fact that now within India, domestic flights have uh, resumed and we are, we are now thinking about international uh, flights also. And today in the morning, I uh, was uh, watching television and I read a news report also on uh, internet, which was saying that very soon SOPs for hotels and malls are, are also going to come forward. So we, we are looking at uh, opening up in a big way. So things, things are moving in the right direction, but uh, obviously, uh, as the doctors have been talking about, as everybody is speaking about it, that we have to learn with COVID. So there's nothing at this moment, post COVID, everything is during COVID. So that's, that's a very important thing that we have to look at. Uh, coming back to our topic, World Heritage is a, is, is a, is a huge success story. And uh, that, that's a very important aspect. The World Heritage list uh, uh, obviously has around about 1,734 sites uh, inscribed from 178 countries. This list is tentative because what happens is that a lot of countries keep applying for for new and new sites and some get approved and some get delisted. So it's always, we always refer to it as a tentative list, but there are approximately 1,734 sites and 193 countries are signatory to this World Heritage Convention. And that's that's an important aspect. And this, this shows that how much importance is being laid on the World Heritage. And it has been a, one of the major, major pullers of uh, tourists and major, major uh, number of tourists are being pulled by World Heritage things. 
Uh, we, we, we primarily, when we talk about heritage and heritage tourism, we talk about two very important things. One is heritage diversity, another is visitor diversity, and another is congestion diversity. So these are very important aspects that we look at. Uh, heritage, obviously, uh, as you can see on my, uh, on my on the screen in front of you, we have right from archaeological sites to cultural landsca uh, landscapes, historic towns, villages like Cusco. Uh, we have historic uh, towns and villages. So they all are, uh, Cusco is very close to Machu Picchu. So that's, uh, which is the base place for that. So what happens is that this heritage diversity is one of those things which is actually attracting people in a big way. Uh, Vista diversity, I'm, 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 I'm talking about Vista diversity now because I'll later on explain to you that what can be done and how uh, in, this, uh, in these times of crisis we can work up. Uh, obviously, local, national, international groups or individuals are uh, visiting. And there is a huge amount of congestion diversity vis-a-vis -vis permanent versus fluctuating congestion. Permanent refers to the fact that uh, when we, we when we when there's a holiday season or when there is a specific season when a lot of people visit, and fluctuation obviously during other times we have. And what 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 actually is or what are the number of people who are actually thinking of visiting these particular uh, sites? Uh, the basic challenges, obviously, COVID is one of those, but there are other challenges also which tourism and world heritage face and that one of the very important aspect is the conservation and pre presentation of actual site uh, if all the participants would remember in one of my earlier lecture when i was talking about sustainability i did speak about the fact that sustainability primarily refers to the fact that uh, that leaving the place if not in a better manner at least in the same manner as which we acquired so that's very important with world heritage uh, world uh, tourism and world heritage sites that the basic factor is that a lot of people uh, don't pay attention towards conservation and presentation of these particular sites and a lot of uh, degradation does happen. So that's that's one of the very important challenges and how visitors can appreciate. Now, a lot of people uh, in modern day times are not able to appreciate the fact that what those ruins actually refer to, what these heritage sites actually refer to and what is the basics or the crux behind that. That's a very, very important aspect. And sustainability obviously is one of those challenge that we are uh, facing. Uh, opportunity, obviously, what I look at is that if your World Heritage Site is very well managed and if it is taken care of and it helps and if it supports the socio-economic development uh, of the host community, then that heritage site is bound to prosper. If, if we feel that there is a lot of leakage vis-a-vis -vis that particular uh, site is concerned, by leakage I mean to say is that a uh, lot of a uh, lot of influx uh, influx of tourists is there but all the revenue goes out of that particular uh, host community does not remain in that city that area that region that country but is moves out of it that's the economic leakage that i'm referring towards uh, i think somebody started an, uh, this thing kindly mm -hmm. okay so we have this, uh, somebody has annotated this screen. Nikhil, can you just take care of it? Yes, sir, I'm looking into it. Kindly uh, don't scribble on the screen, okay? Okay, so uh, carrying forward that I, uh, the challenge I, that I was trying to talk about is that we need to see to it that we uh, we need to build it up. We need to have these uh, opportunities. So the well-managed tourism sites are actually going to help us uh, uh, make more and more visitors reach that particular place and have built up the socio-economic development of those particular host com com uh, communities. Uh, obviously, enrichment and safeguarding of the cultural identity is also going to be a very, very important aspect, which is going to actually uh, let people or pull people towards that particular uh, region or that particular site. Okay, so a couple of uh, points that I think that we should ponder over, that we should think of and that we have been, uh, that we should build up is, uh, this pandemic is there, the virus is there, but obviously we have to see to it, uh, see to the fact that we have to see, go through this time in a most calculated manner. And we have to see through uh, this particular time period. We have to understand the fact that uh, 
uh, private sector is always going to be there, but private sector is facing a lot of global crisis. So how do we look at building up these particular things? Uh, we have to think, think about the fact that how protection and reinforcement of economic material and human resources allocated for public health is taken care of. Now, at this juncture, we all are realizing the fact that public health is going to be and public health and safety is going to be paramount. Public hygiene is going to be uh, paramount, and that's very, very important for everyone. But how do we safeguard all the resources or the human resources that have been allocated for public health? So you as a tourist also, you as a stakeholder within this particular industry also, have to see to it that economic uh, reinforcement of all the economic and other materials within this particular uh, for the public health needs to be reinforced and needs to be take, uh, uh, taken care of. Uh, as we have talked about in earlier lectures also, we have talked about vis-a-vis -vis mice is concerned, vis-a-vis -vis other things are concerned. We have been constantly referring towards very, very important aspect is the whole tourism model is going to be restructured, is going to be rebuilt, is going to be rephrased. That's a very important aspect. You as young stakeholders have to constantly keep looking at that how this tourism model could be restructured or rephrased. Nobody has any clue at this moment because things evolve at a very, very fast pace. Things are moving at such a fast pace that we don't have any clues at this moment that how this tourism model is going to be. UNWTO, as I uh, discussed with you in my first slide, has just now or only yesterday come out with the crisis handling uh, strategies and how the tourism could be opened. So we all are thinking, we all are building up, we all are brainstorming. Uh, people like uh, you who are participating in these sessions, you have thoughts, share it with us or share it directly with the apex agencies and try to see to it that a proper stimulant package is built up. So that's that's a very important point and that should be taken care of while looking forward. What is the way forward now? This is the crux of things. Communication and technological innovation, the path ahead in uh, heritage tourism. That's what, my, what I feel is going to be the way forward. Now, what we happen, uh, as, as you saw, uh, in my first slide that where I refer towards that UNWTO is partnering with Google. So to come out with technological innovations to see that how heritage tourism could be worked up. A lot of museums around the globe are opening their uh, virt uh, opening virtual tours for their guests. So they have started building up videos and they have started building up uh, such like uh, innovative techniques through which a virtual tour could be done for these particular guests. So that's going to be very, very important. I have been constantly speaking about the fact that domestic market is going to be the first one to open. So when I was talking about visitor diversity in my second slide, so that means that's, that comes over here where I'm referring towards is that look at those uh, customers or those tourists from your country, from your region, who were always going for outbound services, who were very aggressive in outbound uh, tourism. So now make them move around domestically because uh, domestic tourism is going to be the first one to open up as uh, because of the international closure of borders also and because of the safety and standard procedures also. And a lot of countries are going to have quarantine options. So domestic is the first one that is going to open up. Well, obviously, the people who were already part of domestic tourism, they are going to remain there. But all those people who from your country were going to other places, pull them towards these places. So that's going to be a very, very important aspect. Cleanliness, sanitation, san uh, sanitization and hygiene levels are going to be very, very important. Now, the first certificate, all the properties, be it heritage properties, be it hospitality, hotels or airlines, anything, they all will be graded on san sanitization and hygiene levels. That's going to be very important. So you have to see to it whichever companies or whichever uh, hospitality uh, group institutions you join, sanitization and hygiene is going to be paramount and that's going to be very, very important aspect. Marketing of fest festivals during economic downturn and managing these challenges. These are going to be the strategies which you have to look up, which you have to constantly build up. Uh, what I feel is that uh, an early intervention on our part, for example, U.S. Uh, students or U.S. stakeholders are uh, attending uh, such like webinars or lecture series as you are attending mine, you also would be looking at or you should be looking at how to enhance your qualification, how to enhance your knowledge levels. Um, a lot of students have been asking me for that uh, when we attend webinars, we are not getting certificates. Why are we not getting certificates? See, eventually your knowledge is what is paramount, the, not the certificates. And these webinar certificates are a way or these webinars or these lecture series are a way of learning, way of interacting and a thought process is being built up. 
So that is what is more important. So your major takeaway has to be an early intervention vis-a-vis -vis your strategy of growing your career is concerned, how to build up, how to make it, uh, take it forward. But strengthening the enabling in our environment. What is the enabling environment at this moment? Enabling environment is our government sector. Enabling environment is uh, the people who are working around these heritage tourism and other tourism sites. And this is going to be our enabling uh, environment. Which primarily includes, or which is going to be, which very important is your sanitization and healthcare workers. So these frontline workers are very important, and they need to be looked at that how things can be moving forward in times to come. So this is something from my side. Uh, obviously, as I've been saying, stay home today for uh, hashtag travel tomorrow. Good luck. Thank you. Thanks a lot for listening to me. Now I would like to hand over to my fellow expert, Dr. Hassan Rafat, for his lecture. So, Dr. Hassan, uh, I've made you the co-host, so you can share your screen also, and you can unmute and start also. Okay. Uh, thank you very much for the invitation. Uh, it's a great honor to participate in such webinar. Thank you, uh, Professor Parik uh, It's a great honor for me, actually, to be invited. Uh, I'm going to just uh, share the screen with you. Is it clear now? Yeah, perfect, perfect. We can see it. We can see it. Okay, uh, I'm not going to introduce myself. It's already, it's already done before. So uh, the topic which I'm going to uh, talk about is heritage tourism and how we can turn this crisis that we are passing through right now into an opportunity. Uh, before talking about COVID-19 and the impact of COVID-19 specifically on uh, heritage tourism, let us just go through very fast what is heritage tourism and why it matters? Why it is considered one of the most important tourism styles? Heritage tourism, according to uh, 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 the researches, is traveling to experience the places and activities that authentically represent, represent the stories and people of the past and, and the present. It includes cultural and natural resources. So why it matters? Because actually, Tourism and heritage are two faces for, uh, for the same currency. Tourism is very important for the heritage, and heritage is very important also for tourism. How? How tourism is very important for the heritage? This may lead us to the definition of the word heritage. According to the UNESCO, heritage is our legacy from the past, what we live it today, and what we pass on to the future generation. So, so heritage is one of the most important issue that we have to keep and maintain and pass it to the future generation. We usually, when we mention heritage, these words are associated with heritage, like preservation, conservation, restoration, protection. So tourism is providing heritage with actually the economic benefit, the revenue that through which we can make the restoration, the conservation of the heritage. And tourism is doing something also uh, besides this. It makes the local community feel the pride and, and identity. You know, when they feel, when they see that the tourists are coming from all the countries all over the world just to see their heritage, this makes their pride and identity in, in, a, level, in, in a high level. And this makes our motivate them to keep and maintain their heritage and to pass it to the new generation. Also, tourism provides them with, with, uh, with job opportunities, with, with, with tourism generate income for them. This is because of the raw material, the heritage, the cultural heritage. But then why heritage is important for tourism? Because heritage, if you look at these two shapes, you will find that heritage contains a wide spectrum of products, which constitute uh, what we can call it the competitive advantage for any destination. You know, sun and sea can, can be found in any destination. But heritage, this is the identity of the destination. This is what makes this destination is different from such destination, from another destination. So heritage, according to the researches, is one of the raw material that increase the demand on the destination. Because we are talking about 
you know, big or, spect you know, wide spectrum of products or let's say raw material that can be shifted, that can be transferred into product, tourism product. And it is enough to say that according to the UNWTO, World Tourism uh, uh, Organization, approximately half of all international trips every year involve visit to cultural heritage sites. So now moving forward to uh, the crisis that we are facing at this, I can admit, and we can all admit it is really uh, unprecedented crisis in terms of numbers, in terms of revenue, in terms of mobility, in terms of everything which is related to the tourism sector. You know, suddenly we found that the tourism sector is a zero income sector. Suddenly we found that all the countries all over the world they are trying to take precautions uh, or preventive measures. So they stop the international flight because they believe that tourism could be spread out or increase the infection uh, rate. So without international flights, there is no business, there is no tourism. So suddenly we found that 50 million jobs at risk according to the World Travel and Tourism Organization. So it's in, you know, according to all criteria, it is a crisis. But in my point of view, I consider it as a break. As, yeah, let's consider it like a time for break, a time for self-evaluation. Yani according to, uh, uh, let's say that we can take a corrective measures for our, you know, uh, plans and ineffective strategies that we have adop adopted even before the coronavirus uh, phase. So in this phase, I consider it as a phase just to do our homework, to organize our home from inside before inviting the people from outside to, the, to visit our destination. So the question is, did we go through the right track even before the coronavirus when it comes to the heritage tourism? In my point of view, heritage tourism is one of the tourism styles that define sustainability as a priority. But on a reality on the ground, says that we have turned uh, heritage tourism into mass tourism in some cases for some uh, destination. And for the other destination, uh, heritage tourism is suffering and it becomes on the verge of extinction. Uh, I can say that Egypt, my country, which is famous for cultural heritage, now cultural heritage tourism accounted for 3% of, of the total amount of the outbound, to, of, of the inbound tourism. And 97% is leisure tourism. So there are some issues that has to be handled, that has to be dealt with during this phase. So when this coronavirus phase is over, we can get the maximum benefit of tourism sector, of heritage tourism sector. The first one is the carrying capacity. You know, most of the countries now, they are competing over numbers. We have, you know, transferred uh, heritage tourism from a sustainable style of tourism into mass tourism. And we didn't take into consideration that this has a very negative impact on the resources itself and on the experience of the customer. You can add to this that with the phase, with the beginning of the phase of the coronavirus, this will never, be uh, uh, a solution or this will never you know any country any destination will follow the same style of tourism you know to increase the number of visitors with uh, disregarding the uh, the economic uh, the the uh, what we can the carrying capacity uh, of the location of the attraction this destination will, will be dismissed by the customer. Why? Because according to all what we have heard, to keep the social distancing, this is one of the most important issue for, for the person in order not to be infected. So in a tourism like this, the customer will never be able to keep the social distancing, so he will search for alternative. So this kind of destination will be uh, disregarded by the customer. So this is one, this is one issue. This is a great opportunity to get back on track again.
because the requirement of this phase is totally different from what we are doing. So what we are doing is that we are trying to attract the maximum number of tourists because we believe with the maximum number of tourists, we are going to, you know, uh, to generate income. And this will, uh, 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 let's say, generate more economic benefit to the destination. But with the coronavirus phase, this is totally uh, untrue. The second issue that we have to deal with during uh, uh, the coronavirus phase is marketing. When it comes to marketing, you will find that most of the marketing strategy, most of the marketing strategy, they are dealing with, uh, they are focusing on the well-known attraction uh, because they feel that with, uh, with marketing the well-known attraction, this will increase the number of uh, visitors. But they didn't take into consideration that this put extra pressure on the win known attraction, which, which is already known by millions of customers. And we are losing a chance to widening our exhibited product. We are just limiting our exhibited product within a very small number of cultural heritage product. So when it comes to Egypt, you will find the pyramids. You will, when, it, when it comes to India, you will find Taj Mahal. When it comes to uh, Greece, for example, you will find uh, Acropolis and so on. And this, during this period, this will never uh, act. Why? Because the customer now, according to the research, there is a significant research volume for phrases like off the beaten pass, alternative destination, hidden gem, and undiscovered paradise. What does this mean? This means that the customer will never be interested in the well-known attraction because they believe that this attraction will attract the maximum number of customers where he will not be able to keep the social distancing. Again, it's the requirement of the phase. You know, we have to shift our thinking in order to keep with the situation. So we have to widening our exhibited product. We have to focus more on the less known destination. We have to, to present something new to the customer. We have to tell him that we have something new for you, something uh, which is really important. It has great importance in terms of heritage, but also you can keep your social distancing uh, during visit. And actually, there are some countries that already started, as the uh, professor has mentioned, to boost, you know, um, what we can call it a virtual tour to create a demand on the least known destination. So when this phase or when this crisis is over, there will be a certain customer who are, who are interested to visit such, uh, such kind of least known destination. So, it is also an opportunity. We have to shift our thinking from the mass tourism into the alternative tourism. Into We have to present something new. We have to widen our exhibited product. Accessibility also, this is something that has to be taken into consideration. We have to ask ourselves, did uh, we apply the measure that enable our heritage attraction to be accessible? Uh, for the different segment of tourists. The last uh, slide I was talking about to diversify the offer. Now we have to diversify our target market. Why? Because yes, we can admit that tourism will come back because according to our experience, tourism has been hit by different crises. And in, in each crisis, tourism come back because it's a very resilient industry. And now, uh, let's say uh, the destination know exactly how to deal with such a kind of, of crisis or at least to mitigate the consequences of the crisis. But we have to take into consideration also that the tourism will come back, but not like an overnight. And all the destination now, they are trying to, to promote uh, domestic tourism first. Uh, so the international tourism, will take you know uh, some time in order to to get back to the same numbers 
it is enough to say that UNWTO has mentioned that 50%, there will be 50% drop in the tourism numbers. So uh, from 1 billion, 400 million, uh, approximately only 700 million will travel in 2021. This means what? That we have to expand our target market. We have to consider each and every one is our target in order to increase the chances to, you know, to attract a considerable number of tourists. So one of the issues that we have to concentrate on, one of the segment is those people with special abilities, with special needs. So we have to ask ourselves right now, are our cultural heritage attraction ready to attract such one billion, we are talking about one billion uh, person all over the world. So according to the research, most of our heritage are not ready to include the special need uh, uh, people with special abilities, either physical abilities or cognitive abilities um, to, to visit and experience our heritage. So this, this is again an opportunity to think and to prepare ourselves and to provide our uh, heritage attraction with the services and facilities needed for such a kind of segment, for such a kind of people who have the ability to travel. And by the way, when they travel, they travel in groups. So at least three or four person in, uh, in, um, in the single trip. So we are talking about very promising market, but are we ready for them? As we have mentioned, we have to expand our exhibit product and we have also to expand our target market. The first, the fourth issue that we have to deal with is the interpretation of our cultural heritage. Because interpretation is very important because it is connect, it connects the customer emotionally with your heritage. This what can make the customer when go back to his or her country tell stories about your heritage, uh, tell experience about uh, his, his visit. So we have different challenges actually when it comes to the interpretation of our heritage. Among these challenges, the lack of interpretation service in some heritage, in some heritage attraction doesn't have this service at all. Uh, also, some in, in some cases, heritage interpretation program are the same. Although the profile of the customer is totally different, so the customer feel bored, and they uh, they feel that they, 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 they are not interested in cultural heritage uh, attraction in a, in, in in this destination. Also, you will find that the quality of interpretation is is not the same. So uh, because the uh, this uh, build the base of education base uh, is different. So you will find that some sometimes that the, the quality of interpretation is, is really high, but in, in other cases, the quality of interpretation is really uh, below the standard, below the expectation of the customer. Interpretation is not just only to tell the customer some information about your cultural heritage. It is how to diversify your heritage, uh, how to provide them with some interpretation program that can, you know, uh, address different kind of experience, different experience styles. If we just say, for example, the craft, the craft can be sold as a tangible product for some destination, they are focusing on the volume of sales. For other destinations, they are focusing on the intangible experience. So they provide the customer with, you know, some touristic programs that enable him or her to see all the faces of manufacturing a single, a single product. In other destinations, they started to, to promote, you know, uh, some uh, tourism act, uh, programs called Craft It Yourself that enables the customer to experience a new experience, to do it himself. So instead of just to, to, to see the process, no, he has now the opportunity 
to participate and to gain a new experience. This is how we can interpret, how we can offer our heritage in a new way, to our, how to customize our heritage in, an, in a new way that suit or that fit different segment of tourists. It's not just to tell information, to provide them with information. No, it's how to uh, customize the product in order to suit different kind of, uh, of customer. The readiness of our attraction. This is one of the issues that has to be uh, dealt with. Actually, why, when it comes to the readiness of our attraction, uh, I'm here talking from the hygiene and the cleanness uh, point of view. Uh, we have to ask ourselves, uh, are our natural and cultural resources are clean and environmentally uh, friendly to the extent that makes the customer motivated to visit? Uh, actually, there are multiple unclean uh, and contaminated heritage attractions. Uh, and we have to know that hygiene and cleanliness are the keywords of, of tourism business in the post-coronavirus phase. So we need to uh, take all the measures that uh, needed to guarantee actually the level of hygiene and cleanliness of our heritage resources. We need to equip, uh, let's say, our attraction with all the issues that might concern the, the customer like the sanitizers, like the face masks, you know, uh, like also uh, to, to ensure that our heritage, our heritage location are clean and tidy and organized and everything, you know. And also we can provide the person who are currently work inside this uh, World Heritage Site or uh, cultural attraction with a certificate that guarantees that those persons are not infected and this certificate is being issued by a single or, or, or uh, by uh, a certain uh, entity, high entity in the country. All of these measures will motivate the customer to experience, you know, our heritage attraction and to recommend our heritage attraction. Okay, this again one opportunity to get back on track again through ensuring the readiness of our heritage attraction in terms of hygiene and the cleanliness. The other issue that we have to take care of is local tourism. And uh, his, his Excellency Professor has mentioned that local tourism is, is very important. And uh, actually, I'm going to tell you, you know, my experience. Uh, local tourism in, in my country is just an alternative tool for international tourism. We didn't take it seriously. We just focus on uh, international tourism because international tourism is the tool through which we can generate income, through which we can generate uh, economic benefit. So we just, uh, this situation has, teach us a very important lesson. Uh, to which extent it is important to encourage domestic tourism. It is very, very important. And to connect the local with their heritage. We have to do our best to make our local communities feel the sense of ownership of, of the heritage. As some local communities, they are lacking the sense of ownership of uh, their heritage. So they, are, they don't care about knowing more about their heritage or uh, just organize visit to, uh, you know, organize some trips to visit their heritage. Now tourism destination need to show cultural heritage tourism, need to consolidate actually uh, the cultural heritage tourism among the locals. Domestic tourism is an effective tool in this uh, phase uh, to come over this the problem of international tourism. So we have to consider domestic promoting uh, heritage tourism to the local as a priority uh, and not just as alternative tool for international tourism. Just to conclude, we have now the chance to review our strategy, to review our mistakes that we have done it before, even before the coronavirus. The mistakes that lead us 
uh, to this current situation when it comes to heritage tourism that lead us to something like mass tourism that make a country like Egypt suffering and you know just attracting 3% of our of its inbound tourism as heritage tourism we can do our homework now and actually let's say uh, it is uh, a period we can as i have mentioned we can revise ourselves we can revise the consultant and to set new strategy to promote and manage heritage tourism and to take into consideration the mistakes that we have done before, even before heritage, the coronavirus. Uh, thank you again. Uh, I don't think that it's, it's a very, very, you know, very fast presentation. So thank you again, Professor uh, Prashat. And uh, it is a great honor for me. And if there is any question, I'm, I'm ready. Thank you, Dr. Hassan. Thanks a lot. Nikhil, can you have the questions for us? Dr. Hassan, you can stop sharing your screen. So we have another screen. Okay. And uh, thanks. Thanks a lot for your views, echoing your views. Uh, we have been uh, trying to see to it that uh, students within India or all stakeholders get a feel of what is going on around the globe. And in that series, this time we had somebody from Egypt giving us a thought from there. So I have, uh, we have a couple of questions over here. Uh, uh, to begin with, uh, I think we'll take the third question first, which talks about can heritage tourism help in achieving sustainability in tourism at regional level? So the first question, uh, Dr. Hassan, that we are taking is can heritage tourism help in achieving sustainability in tourism at regional level? So you want to give your yes, thoughts? Uh, absolutely, yes, because heritage tourism, as I have mentioned, is one of the tourism styles that, you know, that define uh, sustainability principles uh, as a priority, but it's according to uh, to which extent did we manage to uh, to achieve the principles of sustainability, to uh, activate the principle of sustainability. So, from the academic point of view, yes, totally, it is one of the tourism styles that uh, we can say that it is, um, uh, you know. Um, define sustainability as a priority. But when it comes to, the reality is something different. But we have, there are some uh, destination all over the world that can actually, or we can see some examples that activate heritage tourism as a sustainable tool for, uh, for tourism development. Heritage tourism is taking care from the local communities. Heritage tourism is taking care from the resources itself. Heritage tourism, you know, even the the the, the kind or uh, the uh, heritage tourist is such a kind of educated person. Um, he doesn't want to harm the community. He doesn't warm, uh, want to harm the the resources. He wants to keep everything as it is. Although, when 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 practicing the heritage tourism, there are some mistakes usually being done. Which which affect the sustainability of such a kind of of of, uh, of tourism. Uh, well, very good, Dr. Hassan. And I'll take it forward. See, uh, what happens is uh, we don't have an option to be very candid. If we are, if we don't have sustainability, or if we don't uh, are not sustainable vis-a-vis -vis heritage tourism is concerned, we it's not going to. Uh, we are we are not just harming the that particular heritage, but we are harming the thousands and thousands of years of legacy that that heritage carries. That's a very important aspect. So the host community does not have any other option but to see to it that the heritage tourism, whenever it is conducted within their region, is sustainable. And also, we don't have an option vis-a-vis -vis as a tourist are concerned. If we are hell-bent on destroying the heritage of some other city or some other place, then actually we are trying to harm the legacy, we are trying to harm our future generations as well as past generations. So in order to see to it we, uh, that, that everything carries on in very sm smoothly, sustainability is the uh, buzzword, is the keyword, and we have to see to it that we practice all such things because of which we are able to take care of our heritage in a positive and an effective manner. Uh, another question which is related to heritage tourism first that I'm going to take is, what will be the new normal post-COVID in heritage tourism? What will be the new normals post-COVID in heritage tourism? So I'll, I'll, I'll take this first. 
uh, obviously uh, the new normals as i have been constantly referring towards and i have been constantly talking about is are evolving are being built up every second day every second day something new comes up something new idea comes up and that that clicks and everybody starts adopting so at this moment there is constant evolution being done but couple of normals that i feel that which have already been talked about and which are going to stay over there is first of all is uh, obviously sanitization sanitization and sensitization these two things are going to be very very important sanitization of that particular area that particular place heritage site is going to be very important you will need to have proper hygiene protocols being followed up over there and the second is sensitization sensitizing the host communities that what do they stand for and how do they they practice uh, their uh, these normals during uh, during and after covid and sensitization of the tourists who visit these things these are going to be very very important aspects vis-a-vis -vis heritage tourism is concerned and obviously physical distancing is going to be part of it and is going to be practiced dr hasan you want to add something uh, no uh, as you have mentioned uh, professor only uh, you know the, the hygiene and the social distancing what we are going to ensure to do to ensure hygiene and social distancing in order to create demand because the customer now before making reservation to to visit any destination he will become sure that this destination will provide him with the abilities with, with the services uh, and uh, uh, with the services that enable him or her to keep the social distancing and to keep uh, and not to be in, uh, infected and uh, it has to be you know sanitized you know that's yeah, it that that's true that's true there's another question which talks about can virtual tours take place of the original form of tourism well can what of the original form of tourism so i'll i'll take this question first and then you can take it from there uh, obviously uh, see virtual tours are going to be part of the marketing strategy of these museums or these heritage sites or all the destinations in times to come obviously if you feel that you want to replace them no they cannot be replaced but yes there's one important aspect earlier if a person used to visit three or four or used to take three or four holidays in a year or used to visit one, two or three heritage sites in a year now he or she will visit only one heritage site in an year so that's a very key aspect now which heritage site he or she will visit that will be dependent upon the fact the amount of information and knowledge he is able to gather online that's going to be a very very important aspect so these virtual tours will help in decision making process of these tourists to which place they need to visit so they will come equipped they will spend more time at that particular destination but they will come equipped with all the information they'll come equipped with all the questions virtual tours are something like when you come to a class to study a topic before the class you are given the notes or you have studied the notes you have already built up your set of questions you go to the class you you interact with your teacher and then you ask those questions so that is the relevance of virtual tours vis-a-vis -vis, uh, tourism is concerned virtual tours are not going to be substituting the tourism but the fact is that virtual tours uh, virtual tours will actually be supporting the uh, physical form of tourism and these it's going to be very important for all the stakeholders whether be it destinations be it heritage sites be it any uh, theme parks and all those things they need to have virtual presence and they need to have more effective and efficient virtual strategies over to you dr hasan anything you want to add uh, i think that the virtual tour cannot be uh, substitute the uh, the actual tourism it is a very important actually tool uh, to communicate with the customer now you know all the customer now are locked down at at home they are you know serving the internet you know um, uh, trying to to get some information about uh, the uh, tourism destination about the, the product so it is one of the most important issues through which you can communicate with your customer to keep communication tourism is a social you know is uh, industry which is based on information so it is important to provide information to keep communication because as it is said in english if you want to stop a relation stop communication so now the only tool which is available is through the internet so to provide a virtual tour through which you can just enhance or to create a demand so so when 
this coronavirus is, uh, has come to an end, you will find that there are some people who are interested to visit what, has, uh, what they have seen uh, virtually. So it can create a demand. It can you know, uh, make access to the least known destination, which uh, no one knows about it, no one uh, visited before. So it can even uh, market, it could be a very good marketing tool for the list known destination, but uh, it will never substitute the actual tourism. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Hassan. I think uh, that's the time we have for the questions till now. But uh, what we are going to do is uh, we'll have all these questions posted to Dr. Hassan and Dr. Hassan will have these replies then posted on our FB page. So I'll share it with yeah, it was pleasure. It was pleasure. And we can talk about it later. So Nikhil, anything else you need to add now? Or everybody else can switch on their cameras so that we can have a digital selfie. Nikhil, over to you. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. I would like to just have a brief vote of thanks uh, uh, for the experts and the, the people who have joined us today. Uh, am I audible? Yeah, yeah, Nikhil. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. So very, very, yeah, very good afternoon to everyone on behalf of the entire team of uh, BERT, Borderless Educators, Resilience for Tomorrow's Tourism and Hospitality. And on my own behalf, I would like to extend a very hearty vote of thanks to the experts who joined us today. Dr. Hassan and Professor Parikhi Singh Manas and sharing their valuable thoughts on various aspects of heritage tourism and challenges and opportunities ahead and how to overcome this particular challenge. As uh, Professor Manas already said that communication and technology innovation uh, would be a path ahead for uh, heritage tourism and it will be the new normal and uh, as per Dr. Hassan words, push and pull factors plays a very important role as well as the, the uh, to overcome the normal phase and the, the time to take the corrective measures and virtual uh, tourism would be the need of the hour. Uh, yes, and special thanks to Professor Manas for taking such a unique initiative to conduct this particular international web lecture series in tourism and hospitality and bringing various tourism and hospitality stakeholders at a common platform globally and sharing their words of wisdom. Special thanks to my coordinators. Uh, unfortunately, they are not here, Dr. Ramjit and Dr. Kandapan, due to some uh, unavoidable circumstances. All of them are working very hard uh, for this smooth functioning of this particular web lecture series. Further, I must mention a deep sense of appreciation to all the students and faculty members who joined us uh, from various parts of India and abroad. Uh, please note that our next uh, lecture has been scheduled for 3rd of June and the registration link would remain the uh, same. Apologies if I missed any name in the word of appreciation. Station. Please Thank do you. visit our uh, face, yeah, Facebook page and other social media platforms uh, to keep you updated. Take care, be safe and healthy. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Everybody switch on your cameras so that I can take a selfie. And uh, obviously there was a, an unfortunate incident in Dr. Ramjit's place. So he could not join and a lot of people could not join because of this. But uh, uh, grateful to all of you. Next time we have from Taylor's University, Dr. Mustafa coming in. And Dr. Mustafa is a very good expert on research technologies and research tools. So he's going to talk about a few of the things. I would like all of you to come. And thank you for the kind words that you all keep sending me uh, through Facebook, through WhatsApp, uh, on the, whichever medium. And in the chat also, you, you mentioned so many kind things. Thanks a lot.